It's about to be a wild fucking night. This is the car before the stop. <laughs> Get ready for the shenanigans. The police are asking anyone who believe that they have information that can assist in this investigation to call police emergency at 119, the JCF tip line at 811, or Crime Stop at 311. 35-year-old Anika Townsend, popularly known as Slick Yana or Cayenne, was a social media influencer from Waterloo Road, St. Andrew, Jamaica. She amassed nearly 320,000 followers on her Instagram page, where she regularly uploaded fashion videos and endorsed several brands. She also ran a successful online clothing store called Slick Pieces JA and was the mother of a 12-year-old son. Anika was known to many as the life of the party, being a great mom, a great daughter, sister, friend, and an amazing social media personality. She just lived her life unapologetically and made sure to live it to the fullest. Things were really looking up for her. She was enjoying life and all that it had to offer. Videos on her Instagram and TikTok pages show her traveling alongside her best friend to various places, including her most recent trip to Nigeria. Anika will post her final TikTok video on October 18th with 165,000 views where she can be seen holding the keys to her new house, along with the caption, New Beginning. Never could anyone have imagined that such a promising beginning would soon come to a tragic end. Around 9.30 a.m. on October 21st, individuals visiting the popular public bathing beach located in the vicinity of Ramsons and Reading, St. James, Jamaica, discovered a decomposing corpse floating face down in the water. The body was quickly identified as that of 35-year-old Anika Townsend. No cause of death has been provided, but Anika was in a semi-nude state with wounds on her neck and what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the back of her head. Following the grisly discovery, eyewitnesses alerted authorities who enlisted the Marine Division of the Jamaica Constabulary Force to help them retrieve her body from the ocean. Bystanders said they saw police also remove a blood-covered towel, and wig from the scene of the alleged crime. They subsequently identified the St. Andrew Parish-based fashion influencer and brand ambassador later that day with the aid of her mother. Police have since named 37-year-old Roshane Chizzy Patterson as a person of interest in the alleged slaying. A preliminary investigation determined that Anika was last seen alive with Patterson at a well-known restaurant in Hanover after she traveled on a Nutsford Express bus to Montego Bay to meet up with someone. It has not been confirmed whether she went to Montego Bay to specifically meet up with him. On the day she went missing, a witness says they saw her, Patterson, and another male inside of a vehicle headed to a pool party, confirmed by a photo she posted on her social media page of her being at that same event. Some have speculated that one of the women whom she had social media verbal conflicts with possibly set her up, asking Patterson to pursue her in hopes of eventually luring her to her death. In a news report, police stated the following, we have Roshane Patterson of Prosper Hanover as a person of interest in this investigation and are demanding that he turn himself into the police station in Montego Bay, St. James Parish by 5 p.m. on Sunday, which would have been October 23rd. Despite the summons, police have yet to hear from Patterson However, they've conducted a series of raids on Saturday morning, which resulted in the seizure of a motor vehicle and are imploring the public to come forward with any tips that might aid in the investigation. He is believed to have boarded a flight from the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay to Atlanta on Saturday. However, recent updates from the senior superintendent of Jamaica's Constabulary Corporate Communications Unit says there is no evidence that Roshane Patterson has left the country. This has not yet been confirmed. Although, according to SoFlo TV, a popular Jamaican blogger, if he in fact did flee, he would not have yet been on a no-fly list if he already planned on leaving the country following her death, making it easy for him to go undetected. He said that people on social media made claims that he left the country prior to the story even coming out, before he was even listed as a person of interest. As small as Jamaica is, it is not impossible that someone who worked at the airport may have seen him boarding a flight. 
Some have said that Patterson's family is well known, has money, clout, and connections with the police, making it easy for him to get away with criminal behavior, such as those in his past. In fact, there are speculations that he just got back to the island after hiding out on another island for another crime involving another woman. This has not been confirmed or denied. People are criticizing the police for not placing him on a no-fly list prior to releasing his name to the public, giving him ample enough time to flee the country, if this is indeed the case. According to his lawyer, he was supposed to be available Tuesday, two days after he was initially requested to meet with police. This request was also evaded. As the search to locate Patterson continues, information regarding his prior criminal history has emerged. According to police records, he was under investigation in 2013 for rape. However, a judge threw out the case after prosecutors conceded that they could not find the primary witness. Allegations stated that on February 9, 2013, a woman and her partner were walking along Cargo Avenue in St. Andrew when they were accosted by men in a motor vehicle. The couple was held up at gunpoint and the male victim was placed inside of the trunk of the vehicle and was later fatally shot when he jumped from the moving vehicle in an effort to escape. The woman was taken to a location where she was sexually assaulted and stabbed. She was left for dead, but survived and reported the matter to the Halfway Tree Police. Following an investigation, Patterson was held in Halfway Tree Square in 2014. He was later pointed out in an identification lineup. However, the case was dismissed after police failed to locate the primary witness for trial. Now reports are surfacing that Patterson was held just five months ago by the police after avoiding trial for that same crime, nine years after it was dismissed by a judge. It was confirmed that Patterson was reportedly held by officials in St. Lucie in May 2022 after they had sent out a warning calling for him to turn himself in to answer to a case of rape and murder. A senior police official in that parish has since confirmed that information and told news outlets that the case at the time was later transferred to the corporate area and Patterson was scheduled to appear before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on May 31st of 2022. The revelation has left several social media users asking what took place between that time as five months later, Patterson is now at the center of another investigation. Friends and fans have flocked to Instagram to mourn the late social media star's untimely death, leaving messages such as, My soul is sick of all of this. You don't deserve this. No woman deserves this. I wish I could lay it all out there, but slick, you will forever live on in my heart. Anger, fear, and resentment only represents the tip of what some of us are feeling. I choose to remember you happy. I choose to remember you as a businesswoman, as an influencer, as my spirit twin. According to one of her former schoolmates, who was still in shock over the news of her death, Anika was a humble and beautiful soul while she was attending the Edith Dalton James High School. She participated in dance and cheerleading, was outgoing, and was always a humble young girl. Meanwhile, Jamaican TV host and restaurant owner Yannick Curvy Diva Barrett shared a photo of Anika at her restaurant, dining with Curvy. She said, three days ago, I just saw you three days ago when you came by the restaurant with your mom for her birthday. We were laughing because I wanted you to try something other than the stuffed lobster, which was your favorite. To know that that was the last picture you posted and you'll never down with us again hurts my heart. Rest in peace. I still can't believe it. In an emotional and heartfelt Instagram post, her best friend wrote, you've always bragged about how I was your calm because of how reserved I am and how we're the perfect balance for each other, which was the absolute truth. I tried taking you out of your comfort zone, away from what you've known all your life. I managed to get you to conquer your fear of flying, and that made me extremely happy. I only wish I tried harder when I told you to leave Jamaica with me because it gives me anxiety. I wish I hid your passport when we were in Nigeria. I wish you could have seen things from my point of view when I told you Jamaica is not it and that we should just travel and visit occasionally. I can't imagine the pain and agony you must have felt. I keep asking myself, would it have been different if I was there? Would you have gone? Or would you have a fight because I didn't want to go that far? Or I didn't like the people who you were going with? I feel like I failed you by not being in Jamaica. I feel like I didn't press you hard enough to stay with me and that will haunt me for the rest of my life. 
I keep hearing your laugh and giggles in my head and you asking me if I want to have a drink. The sweetest soul I've ever known. My friend who became my sister. Nothing was too good for us to give each other. On Monday evening, family, friends, fans, and even strangers gathered at the Kingston Jerk Center at 2 Chelsea Avenue in Kingston, Jamaica for a candlelight vigil in remembrance of the woman who meant so much to many. As her family and friends try to come to terms with her death, some of them have also been trying to control their anger caused by the negativity being spread about her. Kareem Weathers, social media influencer, podcaster, and radio show host, told The Star, a popular Jamaican-based news source, the following. Oftentimes, we as influencers are treated like objects rather than humans. I've spoken to friends about this. People have written and promoted the most negative things about us without even knowing the effect it can have. Selfish, energetic, supportive, and thoughtful were the words he used to describe Anika, whom he met and developed a close relationship with. He wants her to be remembered for the positive impact she had. It is one of the reasons that various brands continue to partner with her to promote and attract businesses to their page. He said that she was caring, sometimes so much that it might cost her own happiness. He says Anika was that girl. I would say this to her all the time because she embodied what a true influencer was without even trying to be one. Anika was an influencer before we even knew what that word was. But for years, they dragged us through the mud on the gossip sites, not understanding we have feelings and emotions. And since her passing, her name has been circulating with tons of negativity. He described how the two used to talk on the phone for hours, offering each other advice on various aspects of life and sharing their goals. I know I could depend on her for motivation. She would tell me how proud she was of me and my growth. I'll miss that the most. Eris Anderson, owner of Eris Alicia Designs and an influencer, described Anika as being genuine and kind. She was very open and transparent, and I appreciated that because we encounter fake people daily, especially on social media. A lot of people didn't get to see that side of her. She also expressed disgust at how desensitized the social media community has become, questioning why pictures and videos of Anika's deceased body were circulating all over the internet. She says, as a mother, that's the first thing I thought of. How is her son going to heal or start healing if he has to see these images for the rest of his life? It's so heartbreaking. She would have cried if she could know that he isn't going to be protected from seeing her in that state. An alleged audio has been circulating social media of Rashane Patterson going live and clearing his name and also explaining what happened with him and Anika. This has also not been confirmed or denied as actually being Rashane Patterson. As of right now, Rashane Patterson has not been seen or heard from since her body has been discovered. The investigation remains ongoing.